Right, my name is uh, Ola Puanti, and I'll cover the second part of the SimNips uh, introduction, which is uh, the head modeling part. So uh, here you can see some of the points I'll talk about. Uh, the first is I'll quickly show how to create a head model um, from the MR images using head repo and SimNips. I will not run the, the whole head repo pipeline, just show how to, to call it. Uh, then I'll talk a little bit about how to check the segmentation accuracy of the resulting head model and what to look out for in terms of segmentation inaccuracies. Then I'll show uh, a little bit how, this, uh, how the segmentation accuracy affects the simulated electric fields. Um, and finally, I'll give some tips on what kind of MR settings um, and MR scans you should input to Hedrico to have robust head models or robust uh, segmentations and, and also accurate head models. Um, so to generate uh, uh, individualized head model in SimLips is quite easy. You open a terminal uh, and then you call this uh, head repo, which is the head reconstruction pipeline uh, pipeline in SimLips. And the first argument is is this all, which means that you should run all steps. Um, then you should uh, you should input the subject identifier. Here I'm using Ernie, uh, which is our example um, subject. And then after that, uh, you put in the MR scans. So uh, the one you have to, there's mandatory, the first argument is mandatory. So you should put in the T1 weighted scan. And then um, additionally, if you have a T2 weighted scan, you can also uh, include that. And we recommend always to have uh, also T2 weighted scans because typically these make uh, the segmentations more accurate and, and robust. And these don't need to be co-registered. Uh, the head repo pipeline will, will register them for you using SPM. Uh, and if you forget how to call head repo, then there's always this head repo dash H command where you can get the help. And I'll actually show it here. So I have my terminal open here. Uh, and now if I type head repo dash H, it gives me uh, all the different steps you can run. Uh, so these would be arguments to head repo. And if I write head repo all dash H, um, I get more uh, specified help for this uh, specific step, which is basically running all the different steps. So here again, I can see the usage. So I would call head repo all. And um, the arguments in, in these brackets are optional. So you can see that the mandatory arguments is the subject identifier and the input files. And additionally, you can have multiple input files like T1 and T2. All right, uh, let's get back to the talk here. Yes, so once um, head glass run and you will successfully, in the end, you will have a mesh. And then you should always check um, that the segmentation and the generated surfaces uh, look good. Um, and I will show how that works. You would use this check command. So again, you call first head repo, then the first argument is uh, to do the check, and then you use your subject identifier. So here I have already uh, run head repo once. So here it is. Uh, so I have uh, here Ernie, uh, and I've already run head repo on this side, right? Head repo check. Ernie. And now we'll take some maybe 30 seconds, maybe less. Um, so I will open two viewers. In this case, I'm using Freeview. Um, so the first window it opens, I'll change the content here. Let me change the same thing. So here we have the MNI template, and it shows you two registration. One is the 12 degrees of freedom uh, register, registration to this MNI template, and the other one is the nonlinear registration here. So these, oops, uh, so these uh, registrations are used to transform the, the electrode positions from the MNI space to the individual space. So you should check that the registration looks okay, so there's nothing weird going on, and the, the the MNI template and the, the registered T1 match. Uh, so the, for example, the skin contours match and the, the skull looks fine and there's no weird deformations in this 
looks fine as expected as this is our example subject. So I'll close that window. The second window shows you the, um, uh, the segmentation results and the surfaces. So I'll click off this, uh, this volume segmentation, which is this, this colored overlay. And I will change the contrast a little bit so we can see the MR clearer. And then it shows you these, um, these tissue boundaries. So I'll change the head tissue boundaries to be red so it's easier to see. And usually for the brain, we don't see so many segmentation errors where the segmentation errors happen typically in, this, uh, in sort of the inner skull border or the outer skull border. So I'll click off this brain uh, surfaces. And here what you should sort of check is the, that the, the inner skull border and the outer skull border follow the, the intensity gradients in the image uh, so that it looks like the, the skull borders are segmented okay and also that the outer skin border is segmented accurately. And you can scroll through the image a little bit here in, in 3D and see that the, the borders look fine. And in this case, it doesn't seem that we have any clear uh, segmentation errors here. And this is again expected as, as this is our example subject. I'll quickly just show how to do this check uh, on Windows if you don't have this Linux subsystem. Now I'm running Freeview that is installed on uh, in this Linux subsystem. So there's this viewer called MRI Pro GL, which you can download uh, for Windows. Uh, and here it's a bit simpler, but you can do a rough check here as well. So you would open the input scan. So again, I have Ernie here. So I'll take the T1. This new is the intensity corrected, so bias corrected scan. So I'll open that one. Um, so here you can see the scan and the three Ds. And then I'll add an overlay here. And as an overlay, I'll pick this Ernie final contour. So this is the volume segmentation. And I'll open that. Now this color map looks a bit weird. You can change it here. And what I typically use is this NIH color map. So now you can see the different tissues. Here we have the opacity slider. So you can change the opacity so you see the underlying, uh, underlying MR scan. You can change the opacity a little bit so you see both. And then you can scroll around and see that there is no weird segmentation uh, errors going on. Click this off and back on again, just to see that the, the volume segmentation looks good. So this is a way to check it on Windows if you don't have a preview uh, or preserver installed. All right, let's go back to the presentation here. Yes, um, so why is it important to check uh, sort of the segmentations? So here I'm showing, um, uh, an example of a T1 weighted scan with fat suppression. So you can see here uh, that the spongy bone signal, for example, uh, spongy bone is a fatty tissue. Uh, so it's, it's suppressed and here also the fat uh, in the scalp is also suppressed. Here I'm showing the, the head recall uh, segmentation, which is SBM based. Um, and here I'm showing uh, the skull reconstruction from CT for the same subject. And you can clearly see that the, the, the skull is here uh, from Hetrico is underestimated. So we get this, uh, the, the spongy bone is not segmented correctly. And the skull is, uh, skull is much thinner here than it actually is in reality. Um, you can also have uh, non-fat suppressed scans um, where you can now clearly see that the, the spongy bone and the, the fat tissue in the skin really pop out uh, much more than in this scan. Um, and here we now uh, get the inner skull border segment a little bit better and the, the outer skull border is catch on as well, but, uh, but uh, the segmentation misses the spongy bone part. And again, we have this sort of uh, missed part of the skull here. Uh, when the non, so you can change the MR parameters of the non-fat super scan to make the, the fat shift actually. So here we have a fat shift in the up direction and here in the down direction. And you can see that uh, in both cases, we get 
segmentation errors, but they're a bit different. So in this case, the fat shifts towards the cortex and the inner skull board disappears and the method only catches the outer skull border uh, and misses the inner part. So this gets segmented as skin. And clearly this is also not, not so good. So uh, typically uh, how you can get rid of this is to also uh, include a T2 weather scan. Of course, these examples that I'm showing here are very sort of worst case scenarios. So often we see that it uh, Hedrico works fine uh, for T1 weather scans as well, uh, where we have fat suppression. But the most robust uh, results we typically achieve for a combination of T1 and T2 weather scan. And here you can now see uh, that the skull is segmented accurately and it matches the, the CT. CT quite nicely. So I'll actually show an example of how the check looks like for a case uh, which doesn't get segmented so well. So I have this sub subject 09 here. And again, I have processed this with head people before, so I'll run head people as well. Sub 09. And this will open preview again. And yeah, first we see uh, the MNI transformation. So I'll just show this nonlinear one and I can browse around a little bit again. Uh, and it looks like there's nothing weird going on here. So I'll close that one. And here we see the, the segmentation and the surface again. So I will close the volume segmentation. I'll again change the, the color of the non-brain surface and I'll take off the brain surface here and then we can see. Um, so here you see now again if I click off the brain surface we have this this fat shift so this fat layer wait a second I'll change the context here Oops. Um, so the fat layer here is shifted down so it actually should be here where this dark rim is and also the spongy bone here is shifted towards the cortex. I'll change the view a little bit. So here the, the spongy bone should be actually higher, it's shifted down. So now if we look at the, the segmentation, we can clearly see that this, this skull is uh, segmented very thin, uh, thin, and it completely misses the spongy bone part, which is similar to what we saw before in the example that I showed on the slides. So in this case, uh, this is clear quite big segmentation error. And if we don't have a T2 weighted scan for this subject, uh, this should be corrected uh, either manually or, or then changing the, the, the segmentation parameters, which is something uh, we can also give uh, information about, about if you contact us um, uh, through the support at synlips.org uh, email address. All right, so that would be an example of a bad segmentation. Um, so um, it's probably quite clear that uh, going back to this uh, talk that if, if the skull is very um, under segmented then the fields that you would see in the brain uh, are much higher than what you get in reality because the, the skull is actually much uh, much thicker. But there is, um, there is actually uh, a more sort of uh, uh, smaller, like even smaller uh, MR scan parameter differences can affect the fields uh, by quite a lot. And here I'm showing an example of uh, uh, effect on the field simulations in uh, TES. So we have this standard montage uh, and this is what the field roughly looks like. So you see that the field peaks are between the two electrodes uh, or the, the highest field strengths. Um, so what I'm showing here is um, reference segmentation, uh, which was semi done semi-automatically. So it was a combination of automated um, automated segmentation steps and manual corrections. And here uh, the skull was segmented based on a CT scan. So this we consider to be uh, accurate representation of the anatomy of this subject. We generated a, a head model from, uh, from this segmentation and did this standard simulation here. And, and this is what the field looks like. Uh, then we used a uh, new segmentation approach we've been working on 
uh, to segment the, the same uh, same head automatically from a T1 segmentation. And here you can see what the, the segmentation looks like overlaid on the T1. And visually, um, the segmentation looks fairly good. Uh, you can't see differences, too many big differences at least to the reference segmentation, so nothing really pops out. But if you look at the, the surfaces in more detail, here I'm in yellow showing the, the surfaces from the automated segmentation and in, blue, uh, in red uh, from the uh, manual segmentation. So here again, we see the fat shift, so the fat layer shifts down and the automated segmentation under segments the skull by a little bit and the skin is a little bit overestimated. So the skull is a little bit thinner compared to the, the the um, or, uh, manual segmentations. And if we compare the simulated fields from this model to the, the manual one, uh, we see about 30% differences compared to the max uh, maximum field strength here. Uh, so these are quite large differences for such a small sort of segmentation, um, segmentation difference. Now, if you include a T2, um, you see that the, the, the tissue bars are much, much better uh, segmented, so they match the, the semi-automated or the reference segmentations better. And we see also that the differences between the fields uh, from the automated uh, using T1 and T2 uh, compared to the reference segmentations uh, are much closer. So here, green and yellow colors are close to, close to zero. So this is exactly the reason why we also recommend having a T2 it not only makes the uh, makes the segmentations more robust, but also more accurate towards this sort of small uh, differences that might be a more parameter um, dependent when you use only a T1 way to scan. So here uh, we also did the same uh, uh, same simulation for for TM TMS, and here uh, you can see the results all at once. So we have again the reference segmentation. The reference field in here now it goes up to two volts per meter and when you do the simulation based uh, on a segmentation using only a t1 way to scan we get this uh, underestimation of the skull and the field differences are now minus 10 to 10 percent of the peak field here in the, the reference simulation and again if you add a t2 um, the segmentations the automated segmentations match better the, the reference segmentations and, and the field differences go down so those are kind of the things to consider. So the take home messages, uh, or there's two take home messages really. One is that always check the segmentations for these big segmentation errors that it looks fine using the check functionality. And the second thing is that consider adding a T2 uh, to your studies because it makes the segmentations more robust and also uh, remove some of these uh, smaller uh, segmentation differences that you might uh, see when using only a T1 way to scan. Thanks.